Welcome to a Legendarium special about Ju Ti Chin, the Vietnamese warrior woman who defied China. In this episode, we will learn about a young woman who defied foreign rule in her home country and became a legend more than 1500 years before Joan of Arc. Sometime around 245 BC, a baby girl was born to a high-ranking family in northern Vietnam. We do not know her original name, but she is generally known as Ju Ti Chin, or Ju An. The few sources that survive about Ju Ti Chin say that she became an orphan as a toddler and that an elder brother raised her. At the time, the Eastern Wu Dynasty of China ruled Vietnam with a heavy hand. The Chinese believed the Vietnamese to be barbarians in need of civilizing at sword point. In 226 BC, the Eastern Wu decided to demote and purge the local rulers of Vietnam to clear the way for their own Chinese officials. There are two accounts of why Ju Ti Chin chose to join the rebellion against this abusive rule. One story says that she joined her brother in an uprising that he started, for he lost his land and power to the Chinese. Another says that she murdered an abusive sister-in-law and had no choice but to flee to the mountains and soon thereafter began a rebellion. Regardless, at 19 years old, Lady Ju urged her fellow Vietnamese to rise against the Chinese. She raised a following 1,000 strong to drive the Chinese from their homeland. Lady Ju's brother tried to convince her to abandon the war, but Ju's response proved as fearsome as her fighting. She replied, I only want to ride the wind and walk the waves, slay the big whales of the eastern sea, clean up the frontiers and save the people from drowning. Why should I imitate others, bow my head, stoop over, and be a slave? Why resign myself to menial housework? Apparently persuaded, Lady Ju's brother joined her army. According to lore, Ju cut a grand figure on the battlefield, carrying two swords and wearing bright yellow robes while riding a war elephant. She inspired her men not only by bloody deeds, but bold words. Once she thundered, I'd like to ride storms, kill sharks in the open sea, drive out the aggressors, reconquer the country, undo the ties of slavery, and never bend my back to be the concubine of whatever man. Lady Ju led her army north from the Kufeng district to engage the Chinese. Over the next two years, she defeated Wu forces in more than 30 battles. Though the Chinese wrote of a fearsome Vietnamese rebellion, they never mentioned that a woman led it, for that so offended traditional Confucian thought which declared women inferior to men. Perhaps in part because of this humiliation, the Taizu Emperor became determined to stamp out Lady Ju's rebellion once and for all. He sent reinforcements to the Vietnamese frontier and ordered the payment of bribes to Vietnamese who would turn against the rebels. After several months of heavy fighting, the Chinese and Vietnamese traders finally defeated Lady Ju. It is believed that she committed suicide at the age of 23 by jumping into a river rather than become a prisoner. Despite this bleak end, her legacy lives on. Stories claim that she had a voice that sounded loud as a temple bell, and that she stood nine feet tall with breasts three feet long, which she reportedly threw over her shoulders as she rode her elephant into battle. How she managed to do so, when she supposedly wore gold armor, is unclear. Yet these tall tales speak to the incredible presence that this young woman, who inspired people past and present, possessed. When the Chinese restored their control over Vietnam, they also imposed their own Confucian attitudes towards women.
Over the generations that followed the crushing of Lady Chin's rebellion, Vietnamese women lost the freedom they once enjoyed under the rule of their own dynasty that made it almost impossible for another Lady Chin to emerge. In time, the Vietnamese reconnected with their pre-Chinese past. Later generations of revolutionaries often declared Lady Chin their inspiration and claimed she visited them in their dreams. The armies which fought to free and unify Vietnam after World War II included many women following the tradition of Lady Ju. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.